All right, everybody, we are live. My name is Nikki Golden. I am here on behalf of Soul Portraits by Spirit, um, also known as Lean on Spirit. That is my spiritual page, but always known as Nikki Golden. So welcome to this edition of Soul Portraits by Spirit. Today we're going to be working on the Mia Zapata case. So we'll get started here in just a minute. A little bit of background information and the description for you that you can go over and read. So I'll let you get a chance to kind of take a look at that. So this case stands out to me because by coincidence, I happen to be taking a smoke break out in the garage and I um, sat down and watched a little bit of the TV and the music Zapata case was on. Um, I was blessed to be able to capture that's from, uh, let's see, it's two seconds to 11 seconds, so seven or eight seconds maybe of the picture that drew me in. Um, I'll go ahead and show you that picture here real quick. So this is the picture. I had drawn me in that I came in and saw immediately. So when I saw the picture, I thought I saw something around in this area right here. So I'll show you that better better photo of that. Where I actually got the picture that you're looking at right here is from the um, actual medical detective show that I had watched. This is a screen capture um, of the program. And this was in the video from approximately, let's see what I put it. Um, it's notated in the description, um, the times that it says 18, let me look at it real quick. So it's going to be 1802 to 1811. So if you want to go look it up, you can see this is on YouTube right here. You can see the YouTube address there. I don't know if you can because of the live, but live button. Anyways, you can see it down here. This is YouTube that I'm on. So you can literally go yourself to the address. I don't know if I put that in the, the description, but I will um, at the end of the broadcast. So you can go in, go to 18 minutes and two seconds, and you'll see the crime scene photo here. So this is, um, this is actually after, I believe, I'm not sure, but it ends up being, and I'm not going to play it because I had got in trouble <laughs> last time for playing the medical detective show. So I'll just kind of, and I do want to warn about graphic content. This is the actual crime scene photo of Mia in the street. I believe she was found a little after midnight, so this is in the morning. So it's a pretty sad photo. Um... You can see this piece down here. Let me enlarge it here. Come on. Oh, I know, I should have stopped that. Okay, so you can see this piece down here is what it is. And if we were to be able to play it, and you can do this on your own, you would be able to see the spot that I was shown, oh man, okay, I better just get off of it, <laughs> I don't want to push my luck either, let me exit out of this real quick, let's just pause it, we can do that, okay, so let's get back over here, so this is the actual screenshot of that video, you can see the space right here that I was talking about. 
you can literally see in, um, where was it? Over here, when we had this up. Oh, I'm trying to scroll really slow. But it's not working very well. There we go. So you can see it right here. If you do watch the video, you'll be able to see the whole image, which is what I'm showing you right here. So this was the actual screenshot from that video that I just showed you. So when I first saw this when I was out in the garage, I saw it, excuse me, I saw it at this angle. So you can see my TV here, <laughs> out in the garage. So this was the angle that I was looking at. I was sitting on my seat. I just up, up close did a little bit, zoomed it in a little bit so you couldn't see all the craziness around. But so this was my view and this is what I saw in that eight second window. And if you remember what I showed you, you know, the part that you can see in that video, it doesn't last very long. We're already at 810. So I think it's a I think it's after this. So it would come up a little bit more where you will get the picture that I've shown you here, where you'll be able to see this too. And it happens quickly. It happens quickly. You have to catch it. So like I said, if you go ahead and fast forward the video and get through that part of it, then you will definitely see this image that I saw that brought me into the case. So like I said, when I first you know, was looking I was looking in this area right here because I can see what, you know, appears to be a face right here, which I believe this is what kind of separates out the ability that I have from normally when people say, oh, yeah, I see faces too. I can see that. You can see the eyes. You can see what looks like maybe a nostril, a mouth, maybe the chin. So you get the feeling that you can see a face right here. So... My ability kind of goes a little bit deeper than that, where when you are shown this photo, you're generally just looking here, um, you know, looking at the scene, laying around, you know, trying to piece together. You're not really looking in detail like I automatically do. It's just how I view things, I guess. So I think all of us have the ability to find a face in a photo. But what happens with me is kind of a 3D thing. Um, humans can only see in 2D. I feel like I kind of see in 3D when I see this image because not only are my eyes drawn to this, I, don't, I look at this for a split second. Out of that eight seconds, I initially look at this and go, okay, it's a crime scene. There's something else here. Okay, so when you guys are still staring at this and piecing together that the cop cars, there's a bus, there's Mia, I have already scanned strange spots. You can see what could be a face here. So it's not really a matter of, you know, just being able to see faces. Now, I'm in no way saying that that isn't something significant and that what drew me in isn't something significant. So this would be like the side of the face where light would hit, it would shade it, but the face would actually come where you see the line. So like I said, you know, it's not impossible um, what I do. Everybody sees faces, but it really um, has to do with the combination of the free software that I use that everyone can use and replicate exactly what I'm doing. Uh, that website, and I'll go to it now. So it's called Pixlr. Now what you see right here is just my Windows theme. Um, if you go to themes in your Windows, you can find the Pixlr theme. So this just takes me straight into Pixlr so I don't have to type in the box up here every time. So it's a nice option. So, This is Pixlr. Pixlr is a free program. 
It's online application. They also have an Android application. I'm not sure if they have it for, oh, they do. Actually, I have it on Android and iPhone. So it's P-I-X-L-R, so Pixlr. And the address we're at online when we use it on this big version here is at Pixlr.com. And once you get to Pixlr.com, you'll have to choose Pixlr X or Pixlr E, and I am on Pixlr X. So that's just a quick thing to let you know. And I tell you this because I want to always be transparent that everything that I do with Soul Portraits by Spirit is replicatable. You can use the software that I use. Um, I do have one program that I do my screenshot videos from, and I have paid for that. But other than that, everything you're about to see me do right now is done with totally freeware um, apps or, you know, websites. Pixlr is amazing. I've actually paid for a membership before. I'm not logged in at the present time, but I have been logged in before, and Pixlr is a wonderful program for picture editing. It's my go-to. It's what I use every day, whether I'm on my phone or on the computer. All right, so you guys can see right here that I did already bring that screenshot of the actual video, which is what you're going to see. So we're talking about, this was my version of what I saw in the garage, happened to see. So that was my version of the TV and the angle that I took a photo with my phone out in the garage at. So I felt like I could see, you know, maybe see a couple things in this area here where we got this odd stuff going on. I think we all look there. So I went ahead and took a picture. Oh, excuse me, sorry, I'm drinking tea. I went ahead and took a picture and thought, I need to look into this further. <laughs> Excuse me, you guys. I'm really sorry. So I went on my little picture-taking spree. You can see where I was literally taking pictures outside in the garage after. after. And, you know, luckily it's a rewindable video. It wasn't live like this video is being done right now. <laughs> so I could go back and once I did capture that shot and I went and looked to see if there was anything, you know, I could see here where I saw the face. Once I enlarged it, I immediately was able to then see in that adjustable 3D vision where this was no longer the focus for me. Nothing else in the picture was the focus for me because that ended up being in the focus. So once I enlarged it on my phone, I'll just kind of describe it to you here. So I'm sitting in the garage, I've got my phone, I pull up the picture and I'm like, okay, let me look where I saw that face that I was telling you guys about. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about, where I saw the face right here. So I pull up the picture and I enlarge that. Well, when I enlarge it, I enlarge the area about this big and so there is where I was able, my eyes immediately stopped looking at this and shifted to this. So you can now see it where I'm pointing it out at. So what struck me as odd when I did see the face, um, which I didn't see it in the moment that I was taking these photos, I saw this. Once I stopped, paused the video, looked at the picture, was able to see this, then it kind of freaked me out because where you see him at right here, then it looks like his face kind of just blurs off the street. So literally, this is, you know, in all reality, and, you know, I'm not crazy. I, I know that it's probably a watermark on the street or, you know, some type of, you know, variation in the pavement. So, um like I said, once I was able to see that, then that's when I went ahead and started getting my info. Once I saw this and then did that, that's when I started just trying to see anything and everything I might be able to see in the photos. And that's how I start. I just start, you know, capturing, um, you know, things that I might see. 
which is where let me me capture this on this slide because when I looked at it in this form, then I'm like, ew, his face like goes stretches on over, so it was really bizarre looking. So just started realizing once I saw this. And they had already shown me, remember, I had already watched um, the video. So this was the first picture I actually took. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure why it's, probably just because the dates mess with it. This was the first picture I took, and I'm like, okay, yep, I could see somebody in there. So it was even paused when I took the picture because I wanted to see what this face looks like in the in the pause in the in the camera. I mean, in the phone. So then I took it off a of pause and got a picture of it right here. So you can see where I was kind of looking. I had no clue, <laughs> zero clue, that this is what I was actually going to be looking for. I was focused on this, thinking maybe it's Mia because initially for a few hours, you know, of course, they didn't know who she was, so. That could have definitely been a possibility. So yeah, so that is what drew me into my pick frenzy. And then once I went and saw that, uh, it just kind of opened up the door for everything. So anyways, like I said, I had seen this where they had zoomed out and I was able to now see this, but in the meantime, they showed me all this other stuff. See, this is on my TV. This was about the case. I don't think this is really the pictures that they showed him, but it could be. So I saved it anyway. So here he pops up. Here he pops up. So now uh, I'm a little bit obsessed at this point after that. Go into my little frenzy, start saving my stuff. And so I go to take a screenshot. Where is it at? On my phone, um, I was looking to see what pictures I was going to upload. So this is the view from my camera roll, as you can see. So this is the view of pictures that I had to choose from at that moment. So as I'm looking down and I, I look at, you know, the pictures, I get to this and then, you know, I'm kind of baffled now because, well, you can see, you can see that it looks like him a bit. So here he is. So yeah, once I, you know, kind of went a little crazy then. Comparing, so I had screenshotted this, the, the screenshot of my camera roll because it was pretty significant um, looking down at my phone, what I was actually looking at, I was able to identify this face is basically this face. So that's what we're doing here today. We're about to try to fit um, Jesus is his first name into the Mia Zapata crime scene photo. So the only playing around that I've done with it so far, I don't even know if it's going to fit. Um, I just want to express that also. I have a pretty good um, running average of being able to fit probably eight and a half out of 10 times um, things are working out that they do fit in the photo. So I just wanted to share that piece of information. I don't know if it's gonna fit. I have not played around trying to put the photo in there. I'm going exactly off of gut instinct right here live with you guys so that you guys can um, watch, uh, follow along, and see how this has been happening. This is, of course, for documentation purposes, but it's also to um, bring, uh, I don't know where it's gonna go, so I need to bring some light to the situation once you see what happens, if it's able to happen. Hopefully, you know, this is the one that Spirit is gonna guide 
the correct people into my live or be able to see the replay. And uh, I know there are other people who do this. I'm going to talk for a second on that. I now ran into two um, other individuals, both not in the United States, that are doing what I'm doing. One was three years ago. Um, the other one was a couple years ago. What they're doing is um, what I initially um, did, which is wherever I saw someone in a photo, I could see what photo it was that I saw the person. Um, they've both managed to move on from um, doing soul portraits, I'll call them too. And they have gone, you know, on different avenues, but those soul portraits are still there to find. They are linkable, so I will do that once I get off this live and make a few adjustments to the context of the description here. So if I forget, just remind me in the comments to post um, those links also because I really feel like this can go to a whole nother direction. Where it's been going for me, um, for the most part, is leading up to figuring out it's so powerful. It's so powerful to me. So I need to share it and see if other people feel like it's as powerful because if it is what I'm thinking, it could definitely open some doors to at least be a consideration in um, unsolved crimes or, you know, uh, crimes that just happen, you know, that do have, you know, crime scene photos and suspects. Um, I kind of believe that that's kind of where it's heading. And I don't want to seem weird, but there's a certain movie um, about people being guilty before something happens. Um, not necessarily that, just saying. It's kind of futuristic. And, you know, I hope that this or, you know, one of the broadcasts that I end up doing leads somebody my way that wants to try to help me figure it out a little bit more. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into doing the full portrait and see see how it's going to work for us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the picture that I was um, talking to you about. So what this is, is the screenshot that I showed you, which I'm going to go back to that real quick so that we have a reference. So there's the screenshot that I showed you in the background. So what I've done is dropped my version of what my phone captured that brought me into the case, period. So we can take those out of the picture. So here we have just the screenshot. This is that mark turned to the way that it was. You can see the bottom of the TV screen here. So this is how I saw it. This is how you will view it. If you go look in the video, this is a screenshot of the actual video. So you can see what I did is I just put on top of it what I captured versus what you would see so that I had a better perspective of where I was coming from today to do the live. So the first thing we're going to do is, as you saw, I already have all of my images that I need to work with. So First one I'm going for is the one that I saw um, uh, initially my gut reaction as far as what I saw um, when I was able to see, whoops, I'm going to leave him up there too, not that one, I want that one. All right, so here's the photo that we're referencing. If I go really, really big on it. You can literally possibly even see his glasses. So we're going to go find what we see. Um, I see him on a smaller scale, so that might be why I'm just kind of taking that one for granted. I thought maybe I had found one of that photo and put it on here. I didn't. So we're going to do that really quickly. So I've already searched them up. So we are just going to 
Richard Hill here real quick and get a legit photo. Not the one that, oh, this is brilliant. Perfect idea. Here's a reason why. Let me let you see my face. Here's a reason why I didn't have that photo saved for you already. All right, so pay no attention to the licensable Wikimedia Commons. Okay, let me go back to this really quickly. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit because that photo that we just searched right there wasn't what brought me in, but I have a feeling about that photo itself. So I'm gonna actually search Google for the image and see if I can find a larger image of that. If you notice I right clicked and hit, so yeah. There's only small sizes of it. See if we got anything bigger than 368. Sorry to be all technical on you at a time like this. So that's 370. 370 is as big as it's getting. So we will just save the one that we have. Just so we have a reference. There he is there too, clean shaven. That is significant to me because of what his arrest photo looks like. So we'll just make that number 22. Save. Okay, so we'll go back over here and take a look at his face in that one more time. So what I want to try to show you, if they have a picture here of it, I have a picture in my files, but I would love to, maybe that's why I didn't have it saved in my files, because I was only able to get it on the show. Let's see. Let me see what I have in here. This is originally, so this is the one that we just saved. And this is what I was trying to point out was that this dude literally has the five o'clock shadow look going on. So even when we see him clean shaven, you can still see this five o'clock shadow line, which is what really kind of stands out to me because when we're looking at this photo here, we've got this five o'clock shadow line coming off very strong. So we're gonna go ahead and use that picture and make sure which one I wanna use. I think I need to look back at this picture again because where I see him is in this picture. So that is the bigger one, that is that picture. So that's the one that I'm gonna to try to fit in because that's where I saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my version on the TV off of there. And we're gonna browse for that photo. I wanna copy the... So I'm gonna go in and paste that in there and open that up. Give me one second. All right, thank you so much. So the reason you can't see it, you can only see the blue squares because it's underneath my layers here. So I'm just gonna move it up. So there he'll pop up. What I'm gonna do, um, this is something that I've learned to do, is go ahead and make him almost see through. And then, Turn him the way that I see that he could be in that photo. So we're gonna leave him like that. What I am gonna show you now is, let's take him off the screen. 
So this is the original crime scene photo. What I do when I first go in is I make a circle. So it kind of helps me keep track of where I see his face when I'm working because it isn't easy. You, it is easy to get distracted because it is kind of a, a third sight kind of situation. So we just want to try to get him around about to the size of the face that we see there. And you guys, I'm going to go ahead and just be quiet now for a few and work. So you guys can just check it out while I'm working. And I'll definitely be back. You'll definitely hear me again, see me again. All right, be back. Filling you guys in a little bit, you can see that's on zero transparency right here. So what that means is that picture is completely not in the photo. You can see right here, you can't see the picture. So I'll show you what it looks like when the picture comes into view. You will be able to see that picture, okay? So we're taking that totally out of the picture. And now it's just a matter of lining up.
Okay, so what I'm doing right now is kind of looking for some indicators that where the photo sits is where it's supposed to be because this is kind of how spirit portraits work. Soul portraits by spirit work for me. That's why I don't erase the background anymore because a lot of times the background will be significant within the photo of showing me how it's supposed to be in there. You can see as he comes back in the photo, that roundness of whatever that is right here. We'll zoom in on it. So we can still see the difference in the light of the roundness here. Let's try to match up a couple other key points maybe. This is the amazing thing about soul portraits is that things just happen to line up. The darndest thing. <laughs> I don't think any human being, check this out, see where this is and where this is. That line we've already been over, but the line right here where in the photo it's the frame of the picture, okay? The edge of the picture. So we're gonna bring that down. Yes, I know, I see her too, her, him. Not sure who. <laughs> Maybe that's what drew me in at first. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, we're looking at this line and this circle, that piece. So we're going to bring it back in. I'm going to also note how this is in the picture, the brown, how this is what zooming this close can get you. You can tell variations of colors, light and dark. So we are zoomed in right now at 769%, the size of the actual photo. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it, but it's definitely noteworthy. So you can see how there's an inversion of light that goes on in soul portraits. This isn't always the case, but it is definitely something because it's what happens. We see you. We see you. We see you all. <laughs> I honestly believe that this is happening all around us, all the time. How else are spirits going to let us know that they're there? We can capture EVPs. We can definitely capture souls and photos. Those faces that we do see, are there. Those faces that we do see, who is to say that's not another piece of this puzzle that could fit in? In my experience, this could be, uh, this is the thing, it's gonna be a very personal experience for either the sitter, which in this case would be Mia, you know, the victim, or for me, because that's just how soul portraits work. So, we're going to look at it from this little objective here for a moment. So let's take him out and see how we feel about that one. <laughs> how do you feel? How do you guys feel right now? <laughs> Sorry. It, it's really, it, it, it's really just, it's unbelievable. I know. Make that a little bigger. I totally understand if you're in dismay. I totally understand that you probably wouldn't have seen it. And it still needs a little bit of adjusting, I can see. Not much. A little shrinkage. We can get that straight real quick. Let's try it now. Feeling better. 
you guys. I don't know what else to say. I don't know how it works. I don't know. Um, all I know is that the ability is here. You can literally watch it. It's about finding the right angles and fitting the person in without stretching, without pulling to make it fit. The slider just naturally fits in. So we'll have to still do a little playing around, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, we're going to perfect this this time because this is a good live right here. This is a, a great example. Um, read the description while I'm working. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and feel free to share this around, get the word out there. Um, you can see that it's not just me. I definitely am on to something. I'm not sure. So read the description down below while I work and I'll be back.
what I'm testing right now, you guys, is to get you past after view, is what they call it. So points in the picture where I can see. I'm trying to line up where I can see differences in light. To see if it would make any sense in the photo where it's at. It's pretty good right now. You can definitely see the transition of the play on light on the nose. Pops down just a little, which is exactly how inverted light would do because as you can see, if you look at that dip in his nose right here with the colors and how high up it is, what is really happening is now you can see the light in those spots. So that's how I kind of see in the 3D, what I call it, version of it. Because this right here actually gets mapped out underneath for me. And so I can see the lighter up here and the lighter down here. This is nose. So that's what ends up happening is that key points of light, I feel like allow me to see what picture that I see that I have a kind of a gut instinct over at first. You can see how the eyebrows are a little off there. Actually, there, another play on light, you can see how light this area turns from how dark that area was. So we'll focus on just the dark for a minute. So what that dark literally turned into was the light and then there's some dark right here so now let's look at this dark area right here maybe even this one who knows so it looks like to me where that lightness is in the photo and that's at a hundred So not an exact science, but you can see how the play on light is, the infused light situations. It literally maps out the glasses area here. Now we want to see this as an eyebrow, but this is literally the wider area is what is this darker area so we can see how we're guided along a lot of times you have to bring the portrait all the way in because if you look at this point right here and you take that out of the picture you're going to have some kind of a light situation that switches Okay. So when you bring it all the way into the picture, now you can see where the light situation literally switches and gets lighter. So when we take it out, it's going to be the same situation, but you have to get it out of the picture. So I am pretty thrilled about this. I'm going to go ahead and keep making a few adjustments.
I think we got him. We got him. Captured. On a soul portrait. Oh, you guys, I'm thrilled right now. Thrilled. I had... <laughs> just going to share something with you. I had no idea if this was actually going to work out. Um, it also appears that the portrait, when I first put it in and was playing with it, was possibly not going to be a touch of the wrong angle. It's always about going on and turning, turning, positioning, looking at it far away, looking at it closer. So, you know, like I said, it just, it's pretty amazing right now to me. Even looking on your screen. It oftentimes will look different on my screen to your screen. And this one's pretty spot on now. Eyebrows and eyes are in correct positions. Wow. Well, I'm thrilled. What about you guys? What do you think? Like I said, if you know of anybody that um, could appreciate this video, get it shared out there for me. I believe that it can do great things, this ability. I am actually going to be doing several. There's no shortage of cases. Let me just say that. Um, I'll be going still along this route right here. So that, oh, that's a beautiful fit right there. Maybe a hair off, but I don't think it's going to get much closer than that. Wow. What do you guys think? Let me know in your comments down below. So you guys see him now, don't you? He's not even visible. Look, he's hidden. Excuse me. So there you have it, folks. This is how a soul portrait by spirit is made. Just taking it up a little level from where we were at um, in this venture. And like I said, I can still see where after the um, after view goes away, it may need a little more adjusting. So, you know, like I was saying, that's what it's all about, is you just keep playing with it. And I think that way I got the angle right on at that time. Let's take a look at that a little closer. Hey, you're going to have to wait your turn, sir, ma'am, fox, not sure. All right, not to be making light of the subject, but every time we get a little closer here, it just feels so magical. You guys can see what I was saying about the angle needs to be still adjusted a little bit. I need you to see him when I take him off and out of the picture. So I'm going to play with that again for a few.
All right, everybody. This is about as close as we're going to get right here. I may sit with it for a few and come back to it. I'm going to go ahead and make my pictures and get those posted for you guys before and afters. If you guys enjoy this, don't forget to subscribe or like the page. Um, I'm going to be doing loads more stuff. I have probably about seven cases on tap right now that we can do. So I'm going to also be making a lot of members videos for the um, I Buy Me a Coffee page, which is my page is Buy Me a Strong Cup of Tea. But um, visit that BMAC link that I listed down below if you want to subscribe. Um, I also started um, yesterday, uh, recorded yesterday, and I'm actually going to be doing another one of those tonight for the last two membership levels, which is the Practitioner and the Sisters level. So that's a really personal live that I'm going to do tonight. It's not going to be a public broadcast. Um, I possibly will share some of the video in a preview. Um, so make sure you get in there so you don't miss that. Tonight's going to be really good. And I'll probably be back on to do another Soul Portrait tonight because there's so many to do. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Um, like I said, if you could share for me, that would be great. And I will see you guys on the next Soul Portraits by Spirit. This has been the Mia Zapata case worked on. And go ahead and read my um, description and um, put your comment below. Do you guys actually think that this could be something that could possibly aid um, in police type work? Do you think that it could possibly be an ability that could give leads into murder cases or investigations. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm really eager to have you have watched just how you just watched it. Um, that is exactly how I do a soul portrait in private that I post all the pictures of. Um, it's taken it up just a, another level, another notch, so that we can truly... Um, actually maybe really believe that it is that person in the photo coming through for us. Turned out to be a really personal, really um, what we find in the photos is really depends on what that person's intent. If they really want to look into the photo, then it's probably going to fit what they send me. So yeah, I don't know where it can go. I don't know if I'm just really good at finding that pattern of that person's picture in a photograph that you send me that's yours of, you know, the dearly beloved. Um, I'm not really sure what the connection is, so help a girl out, share this video out, um, any type of paranormal, ITC. I would love to hear from anybody who has an opinion after they watch what they just watch here. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for being here, and I will talk to you guys very soon. I'll be on a little later tonight to do the live for the other membership levels. So don't forget, go down and visit the links below and check out the Buy Me a Coffee. It's going to be great. All right. Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.
Tina Major, Mama. It has to be the other major that takes benefit.
in the brain, mama. It's good. Yeah. It's the juicy sauce in love. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to take a minute and it'll take a day and we'll talk to you. I'll take a little bit of time. But you're getting a nap.
Starting dinner in a little bit, Mama. You eating something? Okay, good. Am I still alive? I'm not, am I? I can't be. Where am I at in this whole part? I'm lost. I, I really hope that I was not. Why are you here, nothing? Why are you going to come up again? Why is this not going on these things? The broadcast is still running. How crazy is this? <laughs> Major screw up. Okay, I'm ending the broadcast now. <laughs> oh, Lordy.